Hey there, Joe Brady coming to you from Warwick, New York, more specifically, my backyard. And I'm here today to talk about focus stacking. Now I've talked about it in the past, but what we're gonna do today is actually take our shots and bring them into software to take the different images and put them together into one. Now the demonstration I'm gonna show you is gonna involve six different shots that I shot of a fallen log. And it was very close to me, yet went off to the distance. So there's no way to have enough depth of field to capture it in focus from the very front to the very back. And by doing focus stacking, we can take care of that. So we're gonna do two different softwares. The first one's gonna be just Adobe Photoshop. It does a great job with focus stacking. The second one I'll show you is a focus stacking specific program called Helicon Focus. Now for landscape photography, where you're not dealing with a whole lot of images, you know, three, four, five, maybe six shots, Photoshop is just fine. Where Helicon Focus really shines is when you have big focus stacks. Say you're doing macro photography, and in macro photography, you have very, very narrow depth of field. So a lot of times you're gonna to wanna to have a whole bunch of shots. You might have 30, 40, 50, even more shots in a single stack. That's where Helicon Focus really shines, but I wanna show you how they both work, and you can make the decision. Again, if for landscape photography, a couple of shots, Photoshop's fine. So let's take a look and see how it's done, and I'll show you the end result. Well, I said last week that I would take you through the uh, options of actually creating a focus stack, and I'm gonna show you two different ways to do it. The first one's gonna be with Photoshop. Yes, we're in Lightroom because that's where the image is. And what I did was I took a photograph of this fallen log. Let's go to full screen on this. And here you can see it's close focus right around the front is nice and sharp focus, and as we move back, you can see now it's focused about here. Go back a little further, now it's getting in focus in here. And now you can see the front is pretty blurry, but back here is in focus. Even one more, we've got way in the back focus. So you can see this is not in, in any focus in the front. So we're gonna take these six images and send them into Photoshop to stack, and here's how you do it. Go to Photo, Edit In, and we're not gonna to go to Photoshop. We're gonna to go to edit in, open as layers in Photoshop because we want, them all, we want them all in the same file. So Photoshop is now opening all six images. You can see them showing up in the layers panel over here. And there we go, there's all of them. Now I'm gonna turn off all the layers just so you can see again. I'm gonna zoom in to 100% just so you can see. And look how bad the focus is on the front. This was the back focus shot, and you can see back here everything's nice and tack sharp. But even as you get to about here, it's out of focus. So we'll add the next one. Now you can see we're kind of in focus up to about here. The next one, now we're in focus in this section right here. And we'll come back down with the front is still completely out of focus. We're getting better. Now it's in focus up to about here. You can see this whatever this thing is, is still out of focus. This is a little bit out of focus on the tip here. This is getting better, but it's still not quite there. One more, and now you can see the front is in focus. And let's see if we can make this thing a little sharper. We'll add the last one. And now everything is tack sharp in the front. And now when you look at the back, you can see how out of focus it is. So again, let's see it at full screen. Here's just the front in focus, right down to our feet with these leaves down the bottom. So I'm going to hold down shift and click on all the layers. Now they're all selected and we're going to go up to edit auto align layers. That's an important first part and just leave them on auto hit. Okay. Because even if you're on a tripod, well, even when you're on a tripod, not if, even when you're on a tripod, there's going to be a little bit of movement and you can see right here, just a little bit off the edges and that's fine to be expected. So now they're all lined up. Now we need to go to edit auto blend layers and we want stack images and you want seamless tones and colors don't I wouldn't do content to wear fill transparent areas those little areas like right here we get filled in just don't bother and hit OK and then Photoshop will do its magic and there we go with the exception of a little bit of transparency on some of the corners in fact I'm going to bring up the crop tool and just get rid of those little bits on the top and left hit enter on that 
And there we go. So now we can zoom in. Let's look in the front. Here's 100% in the front. And you can see, oh, I missed there's a little bit at the bottom. You can see the leaves right at our feet are tack sharp as is the beginning of the log. And as we scroll back or drag back, you can see the log from the front all the way to this distance is now tack sharp. And that's all there is to it. It's actually fairly easy to do. It just has a couple of steps. And yeah, you got to do the crop thing. Uh, so that's Photoshop. And that's how you do a focus stack. Now, one thing to be aware of when you're doing focus stacking, if it's windy and there's things blowing around in the background, you're going to make it difficult. Uh, it really works better on sort of a still day. If it's really blowing a lot and you got trees swaying back and forth, you're in for a task and, and there's a good chance it won't work. Focus stacking is really designed for when the things in your shot are not moving. So here's the other software I wanted to share with you. This is a little more advanced software. This is called Helicon Focus and its job is focus stacking and it does it the best. So I'm going to go to File, Open Images and get our same logs. Here's the log series. So we'll click on those and open them. And these are all full-size uh, JPEGs. It could be TIFFs as well. Now, what's interesting about Helicon Focus is you've got these three different methods depending on how it needs to be focused. Uh, method A is probably the default. Uh, if you have very specific issues as you, as you uh, go over them, you can see continuous surfaces and then what is C best if you have really deep stacks. So if you're doing macro stuff and you've got... Oh, 40 shots to focus stack together, then method C is going to be good. For, but for landscape, method A is all you need. Now, you've got a radius and smoothing. I'm going to bring these down a little bit. This will just make things a little bit sharper. And simply hit render. Now, watch this. One, two, three. Oh, not, I didn't even make it to three. It's done. So then we can go to saving. And here's our image now, focus stacked. So I'm going to save it, and I'm just going to call it, I'll call it Helicon A, and hit enter on that. And there we go. That's how easy it is to do. Now, one thing that's interesting about Helicon Focus is you have a retouching panel in here. So if there's a part of the image that did move that is not working, what you can actually do is get a brush and start painting it out. Uh, again, best to not have to do that. It gets really complicated, but just wanted to let you know that that's there. So if you are really into focus stacking, particularly if you're doing macro kind of stuff, where, you've, where you're going to do a lot of focus, a lot of images for your focus stack, maybe 10, 20, 30 or more, uh, really necessary. But for doing, you know, three, four, five, six shots in a landscape focus stack, you have the choice of Helicon Focus, which you saw how fast it was, and Photoshop. In fact, I'm going to go into Photoshop and open up our Helicon Focus. Here it is, Helicon A. Let's open that up. And here's our Helicon Focus stack. And let's go ahead and look at that at 100%. And we can scroll back and you can see, it basically for an image like this, it, it pretty much looks the same. So if you're a Photoshop person, yeah, you can do it. It's a couple more steps. If you're seriously into focus stacking, then take a look at Helicon Focus. So that's how you focus stack. It's really not that difficult. You just need to know the steps to go through. I hope you enjoyed seeing focus stacking in action. It's a fun activity, especially if you really want to get super sharp from right at your feet to far distance. Fun to do. And we'll explore some macro stuff later. But for now, while these leaves are still out, we still have beautiful landscapes to photograph. We'll stick with that. So thanks for watching and I'll see you online again soon. Bye-bye.